Have you ever tried to get information off an old CD or floppy drive? If so, you know it's not the easiest task, which is why a massive undertaking is underway to bring these files online. All right, Chris Welch introduces us to the Internet Archive. You would be surprised. People love these things. Jason Scott takes old video, usually on VHS, and puts it online. And he genuinely loves his job. I wake up every morning going, oh boy, I get to keep going with this. He works as a free range archivist at the Internet Archive, a special repository that exists online for free, letting users browse decades of digitized materials from websites, books, TV and movies to video games and software. There's over 100 petabytes of data there, a petabyte being 1000 terabytes, which is 1000 megabytes. So uh, if you look at what you have in your uh, computer, it's probably a million times that size. And they're making it available to the world for free all the time. But the archives latest venture small computers store their information on a bit of magnetic plastic called a floppy disk. Tens of millions of files, all from floppy disks and CD ROMs. They now exist and can be found at discmaster.textfiles.com. You certainly can't tell what's on a CD-ROM or a floppy drive by looking at it, right? Lance Ulanoff is U.S. Editor-in-Chief at Tech Radar. The kind of information that existed on CDs and discs in the early 90s wasn't necessarily the stuff that they would put online uh, or in some sort of display format, and so it was kind of hidden but may have been important. Some computer programmers already finding gems. Emil Brink writing on Twitter that he just found the first game he ever wrote. Matthew Goldthwaite found old wallpaper he had on his desktop in 1993. Figured it was lost in time, he writes, found it instantly on this site. People have been using it to find software they used to write that they didn't even think a, a version existed to find memories of old programs they played to see if they still exist, um, to find old animated GIFs. It can give us context to stories that we're talking about today by looking at the past and seeing what people were really saying about things and what they were doing with software. Chris Welch, Fox 5 News.